Welcome back to Thoughtful Thursday, where we answer your questions about this past Sunday's message. We've taken a break and we're coming back and we are starting a new series or started a new series and it is Summer on the Mount, a pun from Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 through 7. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we're kicking off this summer and we'll be doing this um, series throughout the summer. Yes. Yeah. All right. So can you just tell us a little bit about this past Sunday's message. Yeah, uh, so we're, we, yeah, we kicked off the Sermon on the Mount. It's the longest uh, recorded uh, continuous teaching of Jesus in the, in the Gospels. Um, and what we looked at were the first 16 verses were the Beatitudes. Um, it's a very popular passage. And we just looked at what true righteousness is and how true righteousness is found in Jesus working in us. All right. Um, so our first question, I think, is based off of that, um, kind of that whole picture. And you had spoken a little bit about the difference between true righteousness and legalism and how the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time, were very much focused on outward right. things that were brought on by legalism. So the question here is, how do I walk in righteousness while avoiding legalism? And I think you talked a little bit about this. Um, you know, obviously there's a difference between legalism that was happening then because it was made from the laws that were in place. And then they put all these like surrounding laws in place right. to, which we'll talk very deeply about next week. Okay. Which so. were put there so that they wouldn't even touch the laws that were already there. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like fast forward, um, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> fast forward. Wait, how did that go again? We're just not how do you fast forward? Nope. You just, you do it. <laughs> and so fast forward to now. And we still do this in church today. And I, I say church by, I mean like the universal church. We still do this. Um, I think some local churches probably do it more than others where mm -hmm. they, within their local body or whatever, they have this like list of things basically to do. Um, and without doing those, it may not be said that you're not a Christian, but it's kind of like implied. Mm -hmm. If you don't do X, Y, Z, you're not like, and, and it might be, I won't even want to say you're not a Christian. They might be, you're not like a really good Christian or you're not you're good part of enough. The yeah. yeah. And maybe those things are, I don't know, serving X amount of times a week, um, coming to church every single Sunday for your whole life. Um, can you think of some others? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's how are are you reading your Bible? All the right. Time? Are you you know and, and that's one of the things that we want people you, to do is to right. read your Bible, but the, it's the heart behind right. that. Right. So, so the whole idea that was not not as helpful as I was hoping it was going to be, but I was thinking more of the terms <laughs> of like you know make sure you bring a, a, a person, person to church, church every yes. Sunday and, and like check the box there. Make sure you've told all of your family members the gospel in, you know, detailed form. Do the Roman right. roads every time you meet with somebody. You might not even know what that is, but it's just a form of sharing the gospel with people. But it's meeting these requirements that are not listed in scripture right. to be a Christian. Yeah, it's putting, what yeah. legalism is, in a, in a nutshell, it's putting extra requirements on the gospel. It's right. adding more to the gospel than what the gospel truly is. Right. And so if you don't add those things on, if you don't do those things, then, you know, yeah, you're not part of the club. You're not, you're not a, you're not truly a follower of Christ. Right. If you're not doing X, Y, and Z on top of what the gospel and the right. scripture So how to be righteous outside of those things. I think it's like you said just before when I told you you weren't being helpful, because you jumped <laughs> ahead and you were saying that it comes from a, a heart posture. Yes. And so when you're doing it, do we want you to read? Yes, we, we should be reading our Bibles. Like, yes, we should be sharing the gospel with people. Yes, we should right. be, you know, coming and joining and gathering together, whether online or in person. Like, yes, we should be doing those things. But it's where your heart is. Are you doing it to check a box? Are you doing this out of, a like, an expression, right? right. And so, yeah, legalism is is also, you know, I'm, I'm checking these boxes so that I have more favor with God, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm going to do, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to, I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to share the gospel with X amount of people every day. I'm going to do whatever it is. And I'm going to do those things so that God will love me more and I'll find more favor with God. Where in our righteousness from Christ and, and doing it that way, it's, 
I'm doing this because of what Christ has done in my life, mm -hmm. because of the fact of Jesus dying on the cross and, and forgiving all my sins and, and changing my life and changing me out of that. I want to read my Bible more because I want to know more about Jesus. I want to know, be in a deeper relationship with him. I want to, those things, it comes from a posture of, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to walk closer to him rather than I'm going to do this so that I can get more of Jesus. Um, I, I also think if you want more in depth on that particular thing to look at James, yes, to go read James. Yep. the book of James and you'll see a, a lot about works versus faith. And, and I think you'll get a better understanding of what we're saying. And right join now. us next week because we're going to dive into it a lot more. That too. Excellent. All right. So the next question, how do you mourn sin without wallowing in it? And we had talked, so you had talked this Sunday about, sorry, I feel like my throat is deep. Um, you talked about the idea that we need to mourn our sin and then hand it over to the Lord and say like, okay, it's yours. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping this from continuing. And I think mourning doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're sitting in it and you're, you're holding on to it. Mourning is the re realizing what you've done, the gravity of it. Who is it? Who has it impacted? How, what are the like consequences of it? while realizing how big God is that he can take it and it can be removed from you. Um, but I think you have to start, I think the idea of asking for forgiveness, if somebody asks for forgiveness, but they have like no idea why they're just like, Oh, I kind of, I upset that person clearly. So I'm just going to ask for forgiveness, but they have no idea what they did. I think about how little that does to help them in not doing it again because they don't know what they did. So I think when we mourn our sin, it's the idea that we are aware of what we are doing that is goes against God's plan for our lives. And in doing that, we're aware. And so we are like, oh, okay, we get the gravity of it. And then we're asking for forgiveness. So it's not sitting in it. It's not saying like, oh, I'm this horrible person and I'm just going to dwell on this. And like, I'm never going to get past. That's not what it is. That's not the mourning. The idea is that understanding what it is. Right. Yeah, and, and I think it's, yeah, it's understanding what it is, understanding the weight mm -hmm. that our sins in the past carried and the work of Christ on the cross. And, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's releasing that. It's, it's coming to the realization of the, gra like you said, the gravity and the, and the weight of it all and, and making a conscious decision that you are going to hand that over to Christ mm -hmm. and walk away from it and, and say, nope, that's dead to me. I'm, I'm gonna and, and like I said on Sunday, it doesn't mean that we're not ever gonna fall again, not, not ever gonna sin again. But in those moments when we do, do we see it the same way God sees it, where immediately I mean, we're we're cut to the heart and saying, "Oh, mm, I did it again." Okay, let me take it to God and truly apologize and and ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and say, "Okay, I'm gonna leave this with you again," and and walk in a way that will try and help okay. me to not do that again. Yep. All right, so our last question is, what does it look like to be a peacemaker in a climate that is filled with conflict? Uh, one of the things you mentioned was the previous verses, hold on, I will find them because I saved them. The previous <clears throat> verses say, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. And I think when you look back on those two things and you said this in the message, when you look back on mercy and pure in heart, when you approach people, um, so it's almost like that was preemptive to the, I mean, it all is, because if you read even further up and it talks about being, um, you know, humble and all these things. So if someone is coming into a situation of conflict with those things already in place, that they are already someone who is meek, someone who is merciful, someone who is pure in heart. And when you come into conflict with those things um, at the forefront of who you are, I think that is how a peacemaker um, has to position themselves because that is the way to bring peace. Now, I think there is a difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. Like a peacemaker is, like you said, meek is not weak. Right. Um, merciful, I mean, all these things, um, pure in heart, humility is not, those don't make you have to uh, fall to whatever the other person wants or thinks or whatever. That's not, that's not what, being a peacemaker is that's being a peacekeeper where you're just like oh I'm just gonna keep my mouth that's not what it is but it's coming at a situation in love and respect for the other person and all of those things and maybe just saying like you said 
agreeing to disagree, but not agreeing that you um, that you don't love that the you person don't love or the person, care person or care for the person. For the person. And so I think that's what you know. I, I like the saying, um, "Meek is not weak," because I think a lot of times in keeping peace, uh, people go for being weak, and and they they lose their convictions and they don't hold to the things they believe in because they want to keep the peace. And that's not what this is talking about. A peacemaker is someone who comes in the the situation loving the other person putting their best interests at heart, um, sharing with them just the the love they have for them outweighs the conflict that is there. And I think um, that is how you can handle, and, and I get it, like there's a lot of conflict in mm -hmm. our world in so many areas, um, and I'm sure there always has been. I mean, if yeah. you look at scripture, obviously, you know, this was written so long ago. Right. And there was so much conflict, so it's nothing new. And I think, you know, um, how do we be peacemakers? I think another great thing is just looking back at, like, all of the situations where conflict arose and how did God's people, um, how did they speak about it? How did they say to handle it? Right. How did God say to handle it? Yeah, no, I think you're right. Uh, I don't know if I can add much more to that. I just, you know... Yeah, I did a great job. So yeah, you're just speechless. Uh, yeah, speechless. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do think, I do think that this is something that is. I don't want to say that this is easy to do because our our natural. It's tendency, easy to say and hard to do. Right. And and I think yes, I think how do how do we be a peacemaker and and especially in our climate right. of what we live in today, where if you do disagree with somebody, they don't see you as a peacemaker then. Right. You know, and and I think. You know, so being the peacemaker is, yeah, like we said on Sunday, and like you have said, it's coming in with just a humble heart um, to seek um, love and, and, and grace and mercy and, and speak that, mm -hmm. you know. And, and if, we can, if we can come with that attitude, look, it, it quickly diffuses a lot of situations if you can come in with that. If you come in all barrels blazing, and you're just ready to take on head on, you know, and mm -hmm. in a very aggressive stance, that puts everybody else in an aggressive stance. Mm -hmm. And so, if you can come in, and, and like you said, don't, and we said on Sunday, don't be a doormat. Don't let people just walk over and keep your mouth shut. But stand your ground firmly in love and grace and mercy. It's amazing how quickly the room diffuses mm -hmm. and the conflict goes away and you have a chance for dialogue and actually have a conversation mm -hmm. which can bring about a peaceful end yeah and i think being a peacemaker you get to experience something that's pretty supernatural because i think it's not our natural human way to you know to have an environment that where people do disagree and they can still be great friends mm -hmm. and i mean i think it would be like it's such an example to people when you can walk in that way where you can truly be in honest and real relationship with people who you don't agree with on every single issue which i mean quite frankly i don't think that's normal to agree with right. people on every situation and issue especially you know amongst our friends and family um, but to be a part of that situation i think is a really supernatural thing to be part of and to watch that and it's it's really just a neat a neat thing to experience when you are willing to submit to to that um, to that way. So yeah. I think that's all. Um, thank you again for joining us this week, yeah. and we look forward to seeing you all online or in person this coming Sunday. I think one update is that we are no longer doing registration. Right, you don't have to register anymore. Right. Um, our capacity limits because of the CDC in the state of New Jersey. As released as we are releasing our capacity limits you will still be required to wear a mask in inside the, the right. building um but, but you don't have to register anymore <clears throat> so, so we look forward to seeing you whether you're in person or online we will yeah. see you on sunday and have yeah. a great week bye, bye.